Hey everyone, welcome back. Duan here again. And the last video that I wanted to upload today was going to be talking about my site visit. So Peace Corps volunteers are assigned sites. They are rarely in the capital city or at the training site. Um, sometimes those two aren't the same. And so during training, Peace Corps sends their volunteers on sites where they'll be for two years or wherever, however long their assignment is. Our site trip is um, probably like 10 weeks, 10 weeks into our Peace Corps training. And the first thing to do is uh, the Peace Corps director or one of the executives will interview you and say, you know, what do you actually want to do? Um, where in the country do you really want to be? And um, what type of culture are you okay with? Because in Guinea, there are a lot of differences. Um, if you were on the coast, you were going to have to be used to really, really hot weather all the time. Um, but it was a language that you were already kind of learning from being at the training site. Uh, there was probably going to be a, a different experiences, you know, being closer to the ocean, being closer to the capital city. Whereas if you had been in the mountains, it was going to be a lot cooler. If you were going to be in Hope, Guinea, it was going to be um, a little bit more liberal, I think, with some of the, the policies. And perhaps I think the French might have been even better over there. Um, for me, I was going off advice that my dad had given me. And he had called and said, you know, son, I need you to tell them that you have to go to Dalaba. And Dalaba is being called um, the, the Swiss Alps of Guinea. That's how cold it is. So do whatever you can to get there. And I was like, sure, whatever. Uh, I had already been breaking out in hives regularly from the heat. I wasn't sleeping well. Um, and I, I wanted, you know, to be in a much cooler environment away from the hot humidity of the, of the coast. And I didn't need to go to the desert. I grew up in a desert. Uh, so that wasn't for me either. So I did what I could. I was like, you know, I have to go. I really want to go to the mountain area. That's that seems to fit exactly what I want. I want to be teaching math. Um, I can teach higher level math. And uh, Jude, our uh, Peace Corps director for the basically the volunteers. So he worked with the volunteers on the education level. Um, he was like, okay, 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 sure. And he gave me poor Dhaka. And Poradaka is in the Futajalan region of Guinea, so it's up in the mountains, actually not too far away from Dalaba. Um, no volunteer at that time got Dalaba um, per se, but we were, several of us were pretty close. And so I was excited. Um, I was going to go to where I had requested, and it was like, you know, something that I had picked, and it was what I wanted, and it seemed to be the, a good fit. So a few days later, we're getting all our stuff together and we're told we're going to go to visit our site for a week. Um, I think we're going to be gone for several days, maybe not a week, but uh, we're going to pack our, our things up just for a short visit. I ended up packing a huge bag because uh, <laughs> I, I was always worried about us getting suspended or evacuated. So I had to, I was thinking ahead um to that problem which i probably shouldn't have i definitely shouldn't have actually and uh, no one else was but I, I packed like my big bag and filled it up with stuff and just in case just in case and uh, usman um the advisor for the peace corps volunteers he was like you're gonna regret this and i was like yeah probably but just in case we get evacuated you'll be <laughs> i will be the only one about my stuff and we take the bus from dubreka all the way up to mamu and as we're going up, we can see like the fog. We can see how things look cooler. We can see how people are changing their outfits. You know, going from uh, women being completely topless in the Basco region during a lot of home activities to, uh, to people wearing a lot more conservative clothes. And then we started seeing people wearing jackets. And already us on the bus were like, do you have your jacket? Because, you know, we've been suffering and... 90 plus degree weather 100 percent humidity and we saw people wearing jackets and then we could feel the windows you know getting cooler and uh it's like oh you can feel it getting cool and finally we get to mamu and we actually needed our jackets it was that cool and uh it was exciting 
uh, all the volunteers got to meet their their coordinators who would be at their site um, except me my coordinator was not there at the time uh, he was busy doing something else and um, but that was fine he uh, he ended up showing up I think the next day so we already been in Mamu for a day uh, he showed up and met me was Principal Mukhtar Jalo, and it was kind of hard to understand him because um, his French was just different. You know, I was still getting used to hearing people speak French, and he didn't speak any English. Uh, and I was actually starting to feel a little sick. I had had something like an acid reflux problem, so already I was like in one of those moods. Like after taking medicine, I was just like you don't really want to talk to anyone, but I tried to make the best of it. Anyways, he he takes me to the taxi place and we're going on a trip from Mamu to Poradaka. So this is the first time that I was going to take a taxi, a Guinea taxi, um, for a very long time. Uh, something like 60 kilometers from Mamu to Poradaka. And that was a trip. Because, one, the, bio, the, the taxi took a while to fill up. And... You know, you're not used to waiting that long for a ride. It's just like there's no time, there's no timeline set. And it was raining that day, didn't know what to expect. We get in the taxi and we're going and going and we finally get off the main road. Um, and we're just in this forest for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And I noticed it stopped raining. I'm looking out the window the whole time. And suddenly like the forest kind of opens up and you just see the beauty that is Guinea, you know, uh, these lush forest, uh, fields of farmland, and it was super beautiful to me. And I knew it was going to be beautiful because the former volunteer who had been at my site had already been in Guinea as well, and he told me. And so I was, I had high expectations. This ride continued like that until we ran into uh, a cow so there's a cow on this downhill slope and we're coming up from the uphill and i see the cow and we all see the cow and the taxi man's honking and honking and honking and the cow like finally like fraudulently moves off and it disappears behind a bush as we're going by it you know i'm following it. i'm like seeing what happened to it i look and there was no cow. There was just a cliff. <laughs> I was like, where'd the cow go? <laughs> and I, like nobody in the cat and nobody in the taxi understood what I was saying. Like, where'd the cow go? It's like the cow wasn't there anymore. And I'm convinced to this day that the cow um, walked off to its untimely death. Anyways, uh, we get to Port Daka. It's completely deserted. We were in the marketplace. Um, but my uh, my principal, my coordinator, he had someone take my stuff up to my house. And again, this is another part of the what I had already been told, that I was going to be living in the most beautiful site, and my house was going to be the best house. So I had to walk up this small hill, um, didn't know where we were going, uh, and we turn a corner, and then we turn into a yard, and yeah, I definitely had a beautiful house. Um, my house was this three bedroom, two bath, um, solar paneled equipped house with an oven and, and a, a western toilet. And it was probably the only oven for hundreds of miles around and probably the only good toilet for hundreds of miles around too. And around my house was just patio, uh, black um, tiles, and it overlooked Poradaka. And at the time I, I, I was still taking in all the side, I thought it was beautiful. I, I remember waking up the next day uh, to go have breakfast with my host family. And I look over the edge of my patio. And again, it's just like this frost, this mist with the sun coming up and the birds chirping. And it smelled so fresh and it was cool. I had a jacket on and it was super beautiful. It was just like, wow, it's hard to describe. It's, 
you really had to be there where where you knew that that you were you were seeing something special from that house um i definitely appreciate it i always appreciate it the rest of the site visit went pretty well i met with my coordinator talked about the things that he wanted to do saw the school it was a bit run down but you know that was expected the host family um, they were treating me well they had a few younger kids uh, saying they wanted to well, the little girl wanted to marry me which is normal in that culture the little kids always want to be your husband or wife um, it was it was just nice it was a really nice place on the way back from poor Dhaka that <laughs> we ran into a few speed bumps um, my first taxi broke down completely in the mud and another taxi had to come pick me up. I don't know, we just got really lucky that there was even a reception for the other taxi to come get us. Then um, when I was back in Mamu, I had to wait while they loaded a piano. <laughs> it looked like a piano, it was some sort of keyboard onto my next taxi. And I was telling the other volunteers who were already in Labe because they were all much closer. It was like I was gonna be the last one. It was gonna take me nine hours to get from uh, Poradaka to Labe. And uh, I was just like, they're loading a piano on my taxi, guys. <laughs> Be there soon. Um, the trip from Mamu to Labe went well. It was, you know, a paved road. We went through Dalaba, went through Pitan, Pita, and uh, saw these, these, I think there was a sign or at least a monument to a place where two other volunteers had died a few years ago in a car accident. Finally, get to Labe and get all the way to the Peace Corps house. And I think it, it was definitely nightfall. <laughs> I get through the door and, Anjarama! You know, that was like just the salutations and the pular and, the, and all the volunteers were like, hey, hey, You know, it was really fun, it was exciting. Everyone made it uh, to Labe. You know, nobody had issues except me with the lost cow and the piano. Um, I still had a little bit of some acid reflux. But uh, Tostin, who was an amazing cook, and the other volunteers had already made this amazing meal that we shared, and we just enjoyed the Peace Corps house in Labe, uh, which had a library. That was a special part, you know. You never realize how much you miss books until you have a library in front of you. And it was just cool, you know, being with other volunteers. We'd gone to our site, we'd been, thought it was special, had our own experiences, what we had seen, what we'd done. And again, we were just feeling really excited for what was going to be next. Um, we didn't know what was going to be next. There was still a lot of anxiety, but still, that's part of what makes it special, right? Um, yeah. So uh, that's basically the it for my site visit. Uh, I guess just some of the takeaways. Uh, know the potential sites in your country and know which types of climates and cultures you want to be used to. You know, like I knew I was going to a little bit more conservative area, but I also knew it was going to be temperature-wise a lot more cooler. Um, and just be prepared for, <laughs> for a lot of uh, uh, pit stops. You know, your taxi might break down, you might hit a cow. I know one volunteer's taxi did actually hit a cow. <laughs> and uh, you're just going to be waiting around for a lot, but just know that the other volunteers are going through the same thing and that that regional house is really something special. Okay, guys? Um, have a good one, and happy Valentine's Day. Take care.